fan of Steve's for quite some time now. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, prior to founding a leading clean tech venture firm, the Wesley Group, Mr. Wesley served as the controller and chief fiscal officer of the state of California, the world's seventh largest economy. Before running for office, Mr. Wesley helped guide the online auction company eBay through its period of most rapid growth, serving as the Senior Vice President of Marketing, Business Development, M&A, and International. It gives me a great pleasure to introduce Steve Wesley. So I am absolutely delighted to be here, and I want to be provocative, thought-provoking, and then I'm going to leave time at the end for questions. So at any time you want, feel free, raise your hand. I want to make this as participatory as possible. The overarching message is, whatever space you're in, whatever industry you're in, whatever you're doing, your industry is about to be disintermediated. And if you don't do it, someone is going to do it to you. This quote from Steve Jobs, I think, really says it all. Ponder this, just 14 years ago, in our world, 81% of all the fuel used for electric gener uh, generating capacity throughout the planet is carbon-based and nuclear. Renewables, just 19%, and most of that is hydro. Yet, fast forward just 14 years, dramatic shift to renewables that no one, frankly, saw coming to the point where today, close, uh, actually today, over 60% is renewable, and the curve is going up because the cost of renewables continue to go down. We are looking at a world that is going to be driven by renewable energy. And if you close your eyes and just think about this for a minute, if you live in a household like mine, where you're driving an electric vehicle, you have solar on your roof, you get to a point where you will never pay a penny again for gas or electricity. This is a stunning vision. It's happening now, and most of it is happening right here in California. What's stunning is in each segment, and the gentleman who spoke in the LED companies was exactly right. I can tell you where that equilibrium point is. You know, when you get to a certain point, it just becomes a no-brainer in the consumer buying mind to make that switch from CFLs to LEDs, to make the switch to solar. Folks, I used to work at the Department of Energy in the Office of Conservation of Solar. I love solar. $101 a watt. Kind of hard to sell. Today, you're seeing costs dropping below $2 a watt installed, rapidly heading towards one. I served on the Secretary of Energy Chu's uh, advisory board when he was Secretary of Energy. He will tell you that we are at cost parity now for renewables. And it's just going to continue to go because natural gas, oil, these things go up and down. They fluctuate like crazy. No one really knows where the prices are going. Solar and wind only go one direction, and that's cheaper. And that's why we're entering a revolution in renewables. Battery storage, the same thing. We've watched the prices come down from $1,500 a kilowatt to $1,200 to $1,000 to $800. People ask me about the uh, Tesla uh, wall storage unit at about $500 a watt. It's coming down. The magic number we believe is about $250. That number is just around the corner. And when that happens, you'll see these everywhere. And what is bringing this on even faster than the wheels of the free market turning is costs going down in concert with leaders. And I was trying to line this up with who was on the left and the right, and I decided to put the Pope in the middle, but he may be the most progressive voice out there. But when you have this combination of free market forces pushing towards renewables, global leaders in every part of the world. I was just with uh, Prime Minister Modi in uh, San Jose, who is, by the way, just a stunning rock star, and has just said he will, over the next five to seven years, quintuple India's solar generating capacity. Combine that with spontaneous movements like what's happening in New York City. I was just there, and there were 400,000 people coming up Madison Avenue. 
this is an amazing movement we're part of. And what helps bring it all together? Who knows what this is? The Tesla Gigafactory. 20 miles west of Reno. Ponder this. One of the largest buildings in North America. Over a mile long. 2.4 million square feet. If any of you think a, a price club or Costco is big, this is bigger than 24 of them end to end. This one plant, which comes online in 12 months, this is not some distant futuristic thing, online in 12 months will more than double all of the lithium ion battery capacity on the planet today. What's the impact of that? Driving prices down, you will see electric cars on the street probably within two years with a range of 200 miles in the $35,000 range, and that is just the beginning. <laughs> What's fascinating to me is it's not just better technologies and lower prices, it's the combination of new technology and completely new business models. And what we love is uh, we've moved far beyond wind and solar, the things that are capital intense, good businesses but lower margins, to new models, things like what we call clean web, the intersection of the internet, software, big data that enables people to reduce their carbon footprint with companies that have extraordinary business models that create the opportunity for huge returns. This is the future of the global and we're living in the middle of it now. So what's next? Sorry, I'm sorry, what's driving all of this? You. I'm standing here in front of a sea full of millennials. I represent the tail end of the baby boomer generation and the entire ethos which drove the global economy for 50 years and global government and politics was you had to buy the biggest TV you could afford and then get the biggest car, and then the biggest house, and after three or four years, throw it out and buy an even bigger one. It's all going away. There's a new ethos of millennials. Reduce your carbon footprint. Greater convenience, more data, health, sustainability. And why should we care? Because millennials are about to become in 16 months, the largest buying cohort on the planet. You will be driving the global economy. And everybody that has a company or produces a product <laughs> has to pay attention because you will become the driving force in the economy of the future. And these are the things you want. We are investing in companies that are green and sustainable and so on, but what we're really investing in is the companies of the future that millennials want to buy products and services for. So what's next? Where will the new forces be made? It's moving quickly beyond solar and wind into these new areas. Sharing economy, internet of things, big data. I'm gonna say a quick word about each one. On the sharing economy, it's stunning. You know, more and more people say all the time, or we, we get the question, you know, how, many, how many sharing economy companies are there? 100, 200? How many could there possibly be? Time Magazine says when they did this cover story six months ago, over 100,000 and doubling every 90 days. So how big are these things? Take a quick look at Airbnb. I, I just have to tell the story. When I was growing up as a kid in California, if your parents were kind of doing okay, it's a big treat, you might, you might go on a vacation and get to stay in a Hilton hotel sort of a big deal. Laughable today, maybe. Hilton Hotel, 700,000 rooms available every night in 2,300 cities around the world. Not bad. Biggest hotel chain on the planet. Airbnb, after six years, one million rooms available tonight in 23,000 cities and doubling every other year. This is the power of the new sharing economy. Internet of Things, you all know about this. It seems remarkable. A billion smartphones on the planet. We're moving quickly towards two billion. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Cisco predicts 50 billion units with internet capacity in them. 
this is the new world we're living in, creating more opportunities than you can imagine. Where will you see it first? A lot of us will be in the home. This has dramatic effects because there's one industry that's had a closer relationship with the consumer than almost anybody, the utility industry. It's the one entity that actually comes home with you. They're in the home. They know your data. They know a lot about you. These firms, Google, Apple, Amazon, are in a relentless push to own the millennial market. And they're coming in between the utilities and the user into your home with you with full suites of products that will make your life better, cleaner, more efficient. But they're sure going to know a lot about you, which raises privacy issues in the future. If this is where things are going. Keep an eye on these three companies. Well, the great firms of the last half century, IBM and HP and so on, we barely see them. These firms turn up everywhere, and they're buying everything within sight to create a whole new energy efficient Take a look at this. Big data revolutionizing virtually every industry. Whoever thought Google would be challenging BMW or PayPal would be challenging Visa 10 years ago would have been laughable. Now, who wants to bet on the incumbents? And my favorite example is how big data is revolutionizing the auto industry. The most interesting entrance to me, Google and Apple, are moving faster than I ever dreamed. Just three or four years ago, I live in Silicon Valley, so we see self-driving cars on the road today. Apple, which assiduously denies it's working on a new car company, let me just pull the curtains back a little bit, inside the company, uh, they've increased the staff dedicated to Apple's new car division. And by the way, let me be clear, they're not just making components for Detroit, they're making the whole damn car. <laughs> They've just increased staffing from 600 people to 1,800 people. They are not fiddling around. An internal word is they will have an Apple car on the road within 48 months. Google will be ahead of them. I'm lucky enough to drive a Tesla. Tesla just sent the software out to me saying, if you have one of the newer cars, with the new software, you can drive the Tesla where the steering wheel now moves itself for 70% of what you need to do today. You will see self-driving cars all over within five years. If I had told you this two years ago, you would have said, Steve, that's science fiction. You're nuts. I may be nuts, but I'm here to tell you, you will see these things all over within two to five years. It's just the beginning of the new resource revolution lucky enough to be living through. So let me close here, and I'll throw it open to some questions, but I just want to tell you this quick story, which I always loved. In the 15th century, in Spain, on the coins, on all the coins, it said, me plus ultra. There is no more beyond. Spain was on the edge of the known world, and all of a sudden, Vasco da Gama, Magellan, Columbus, these people go out, sail off, and come back. Extraordinary stories. There is an entire new world out there, new people, new everything. And they came back and said, everything we've been told our whole lives turned out not to be true. And they literally changed what they printed on all of the coins to say, plus ultra, there's a whole I'm here to tell you my entire life, at university, we were taught as fact that economic growth went hand in hand with the amount of oil that we burned. That's not true at all. I'm here to tell you there is a whole new world and we're calling out for new explorers, inventors, entrepreneurs, people who want to create that new future to get up, start a new company, disintermediate the old, and not only become, we hope, fabulously wealthy, but change the world when you do it. There's never been a better time to be an entrepreneur. Thank you. So, I would love to tackle any questions you might have.